Okay, hello everyone. Um, so what we're going to do today is I am going to talk through the pre-production of the NEA, that is the coursework, for the EDUCAS A-level media studies. Um, so basically uh, I you know, as a teacher, we'll do this differently to other teachers. So students who I don't teach, you might not be doing this uh, choice, this brief. Uh, the one I'm setting is music video magazine project. Um, so that's what I'm setting. Uh, however, hopefully this will be useful for other students as well. Um, but basically, yeah, what I'm going to be talking about here is the pre-production. So everything that goes on before you make the music video in the magazine. And I'm also just going to be going over, first of all, exactly what the project is as well. OK. Uh, so first of all, let's just start off with the rules. Um, you are going to be completing an individual cross media production. So what this means is you are going to be making a production which is spread across different media formats. So you are going to be making a music video and you are going to be making a uh, magazine as well. And because it's cross media, these two things need to be related. So first of all, you're going to make a music video and then you're going to make a magazine which is related to that music video. And we're going to discuss exactly how they're going to be related later on. You are being marked on this through your ability to apply your knowledge and understanding of the theoretical framework. OK, so for both the music video and for the magazine as well, you are being marked on your ability to apply media language. So things like shot types, camera angles, uh, mise-en-scene, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you're being marked on it. Representation, so how certain groups in society are represented, so men, women, Welsh people, whatever. Uh, media industries, so uh, different, you know, um, exactly how the industry behind it works, the actual function of the media products. So you're making a music video, that's an advert for a song. OK, so we need to kind of consider, is it an effective advert for a song? Does it actually work well? Does it actually look like a music video? Could this be uploaded to YouTube, etc.? Is it going to go viral? Hopefully, yeah. Uh, audiences. So you need to think about your actual specific audience. You do have a specific audience that you're going to be given, uh, but don't worry, it's pretty broad. It's good. It's very good this year. Uh, this is individual work. You are going to be creating your music video and your magazine all by yourself, except that's impossible. I mean, unless you are literally uh, setting up the camera, hitting record and then doing a little dance in front of it and then you know taking it down again. I mean, technically, you can do that. People have done that. It's worked very well. Even professional artists have done that. But even though your stuff is produced individually, you take sole responsibility for it. You are allowed to include unassessed participants. OK, so they may appear in your product, they may act in your product, they may dance in your product, they may lip sync in your product. They may even do things like operate lighting. Uh, they may also operate camera equipment, any equipment you like, as long as you are directing them. OK, so you are working individually for this. However, I do encourage you to work in groups. Had this been a normal year, I would be getting you into little uh, groups at this stage where you could share ideas and, you know, call on each other. But unfortunately, we're not in that position this year. Uh, so that's something we're going to have to consider later on. OK, uh, but yeah, OK, it's individual work. So this is directly from the specification. So just to completely underline everything I've just been saying, the cross media production must be conceptualized as a complete package of interrelated products in two forms, reflecting the nature of the contemporary media and the importance of different platforms in distributing and enabling audiences to access the media. Uh, I mean, again, basically what that means is you are producing two media products. They must be part and parcel of the same thing. So the magazine has got to be about the same artist that you featured in the music video. We'll talk more about that later on. Uh, 
it reflect the nature of contemporary media. Um, so yeah, essentially it needs to look and feel like a music video and it needs to, you know, if you did upload it to YouTube and we will be uploading them to YouTube, um, it needs to look good, okay? It's quite a good threat actually, because we do upload these to YouTube. Um, you need to consider, is this actually gonna be good? Are people actually gonna like this? Are people gonna laugh at this? Hopefully not. I'm sure they won't, don't worry. Uh, importance of different platforms in distributing and enabling audiences to access the media. So again, thinking about audiences, does it actually target an audience or is it just a big mess? Hopefully not. This is your brief. This is your setup. This is what you need to do. You need to create a cross media production for a new artist or band in a genre slash subgenre slash hybrid genre of your choice. OK, so there's a few things here. First of all, it's a cross-media production, which means the magazine and the music video need to be interrelated. We've already talked about that. Uh, a new artist. Right. Let's just say you pick a Beyonce song. You are not Beyonce, no matter what you think. Uh, you will be creating a new artist. So even though the song you haven't written, you haven't done the song, you will be creating this new artist. You'll be creating the way that he or she looks. You'll be creating what they wear. You will be considering how they talk, how they act and stuff like that. Because do remember in the magazine, you're also going to be interviewing them, which is a great way to get across their personality. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. We'll come on to that again in a second. Uh, any genre. So it could be a DJ. It could be a solo singer, songwriter. It could be a pop group. It could be a band. It could be whatever. Absolutely. Any genre you like. Absolutely any genre, any subgenre, any hybrid genre. Okay, so I don't care if it's PC music or Vaporwave or Splittercore or Grindcore or whatever. Okay, it really, really doesn't matter. In fact, actually, the weirder the better. Pick something interesting. It will make for a more interesting video, honestly. Okay. Uh, in terms of genre, Generally, I get asked, you know, does it have to have vocals? No, it doesn't have to have vocals, but your music video does need to have an element of performance. So that's something that you need to consider. Often it can be easier making a music video without vocals, uh, just purely because, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll consider this later. OK, uh, and the song can be from any era, so it doesn't have to be a recent song. OK, uh, even though for this brief, you are creating a new artist, a new and exciting artist. Uh, many artists, you know, create music from different, you know, it sounds like it comes from different eras. So the band Cold Cave, for example, sound like they came straight out of the early 80s. Amy Winehouse like made music that sounded like it came from the 60s. OK, like this is very, very much a thing. The music industry continues to look backwards. OK, so any era, I don't care. It could be from the 30s. You could do some, you know, 30s Dixieland jazz. That would be wonderful. Do something like that. That would be cool. Uh, you need to create an original music video and associated print or online material to promote uh, the same artist or band. Um, so, yeah, whatever artist you created, you need to make sure that uh, you are creating... Yeah, yeah, a, a music video that fits in with them. And it needs to be original. It can't be based on, well, let me choose my words carefully here. Uh, it needs to be original. It needs to be your creation. Uh, third point, you should create a cross-media production for a specialist record label. So what I mean by specialist is that you're going to think about what record label you would like this to belong to. You're going to create your own record label. Okay, that's something, that's something will come up later on. And the record label should be either independent or part of a conglomerate, so major. Uh, so independent record label, for example, XL Recordings, like indie music, or part of a large conglomerate, for example, Def Jam, so like rap and hip hop. So th the idea is that you're making something specific. Okay, so if your music has a genre, and every music has genre, like 
yeah, uh, it you, you know you can then assign it to a specialist record label. We'll, we'll think more about this later on. I mean, like this this is something which is kind of by the by for for the time being. Your audience should be specialised or niche. You are not going for a huge audience. Well, it might be huge, it might be fairly large, but it is a very specific audience, right? So you need to consider what this specific audience is, right? You need to consider exactly what audience you're going for. This might be in terms of gender, it might be in terms of social class, it might be in terms of what kind of music they listen to already. That tends to be how music is marketed, okay? Your target audience is 18 to 34 year olds. That's young people. That's you guys watching. Well, maybe some of you guys. And it's me as well. I fit in there. That's great. Uh, so, yeah, a young target audience. Now, most music does target a young audience. And the reason for this is that you guys uh, have more expendable income. You guys are more likely to go to gigs and stuff like that. You guys are more likely to buy merchandise. You guys are more likely to, you know, interact with us. So this does tend to be the age group that the music industry does tend to target. This next point is it can this can be a real deal breaker for some students, but I, I really want you to listen to this. The song you select for your music video cannot already have an official music video. So you can't pick a song which already has a music video. Now, when I say official music video, what I'm talking about is, uh, well, this, this varies completely. An unofficial music video, for example, a music video made by somebody who isn't a band, that's fine, that doesn't count. A lyric video, that's fine, that doesn't count. An official audio video, which is just an image and it's just been shoved onto YouTube just in order to get clicks, uh, that's also completely fine. However, it cannot have an official music video. And yeah, so we need to talk about this. You need to let me know if, uh, if you're doing something a bit weird. Someone's already brought up the issue of remixes with me. Remixes are an interesting one. And what I'm going to say is the remix, if the original version has an official music video and the remix does not, uh, the remix needs to be totally different. And you're, you're going to need to prove that to me. Okay. In general, what I would say is probably steer away from remixes unless it is totally different. OK, uh, if you're thinking, well, I can't do anything because every song I've ever, ever loved or ever, ever wanted to do for this project already has a music video, boo-hoo. Um, what you need to do is pick the song that you would have wanted to do and then uh, pick the artist, uh, find the album that it was on. OK, because it's very, very rare that an artist will make a music video for every single last song on an album. Okay, so there are a few examples of this. So Discovery by Daft Punk, Lemonade by Beyonce, like both of these are examples of, you know, albums which have every track on it has a music video, um, but they're extremely rare. Okay, you're just going to need to pick another track by that artist. Okay, so that's, that's the best thing to do. Okay, uh, if you really are having issues with it, you need to listen to more music. Okay, you need to listen to as much music as possible and not just through YouTube. Okay, you need to figure out, you know, yeah, <laughs> this is it. Uh, so listen to as much music as possible and pick something which doesn't already have a music video. Like, don't give up after four or five attempts. All right, right, final point. On this slide, you will create a new and exciting artist slash singer slash band slash DJ with a clear brand identity. OK, so you will be creating an artist. So let's just say you were doing a Billie Eilish song. It's all very depressing. It's all very miserable. It's all very edgy. Um, you can still do something like that with your artist. That is absolutely fine. You can make something which is depressing, which is edgy and whatever. Uh, however, 
she can't be called Billie Eilish. You can even do somebody with some with like a similar style, but you can like call her Millie Bylish or Gilly Shilish. I've, I've literally no idea. Uh, you make it up. Um, another thing as well is uh, you can gender swap. So if you've got a song which is recorded originally by a woman, you can have somebody in the video uh, who is uh, a guy singing it. That is absolutely fine. And actually, it might be a specific point that you're making. Uh, remember the video to Reptite, where the performer who is uh, male doesn't appear in the video at all. But there are there, there is a woman in the master shot performing the song, uh, although very badly. Right, okay, so we're now going to go through the two different tasks that you need to do. You won't be doing these two tasks until you come back from lockdown. And when that is, I do not know. I have absolutely no idea. Okay, but these are the two tasks that you need to do. I'm just going to tell you about this, just, you know, roughly what's going on. Okay, so task one, you need to create an original music video to promote your new artist or band. Music video needs to be between three and three and a half minutes long. So this is another thing which is going to influence your choice. However, there are ways around this. Okay, so last year we had a student who picked a song which is a minute and a half and what he did was he did a very long intro to this song. And this is what a lot of artists do, uh, even if their song isn't particularly short. They will do some big, long intro to lead into the song. And that's very, very much an accepted convention. OK, you can also do an intro and an outro or an outro, or you can even do some kind of skit in the middle. Do remember, though, you are kind of or you are very much making more work for yourself if you do pick a song like this, uh, because you're going to have to come up with a cool idea for this. You can't just literally just muck around for a minute or two. Uh, and yeah, because that would just affect your grade. The reason why we say three to three and a half minutes long is um, any less. You're not really going to be getting the marks that you need to get an A. Not really going to have the time to demonstrate your excellent technical abilities, and any more, uh, it's going to be too much work. You might be thinking, three minutes is nothing. I'll do ten minutes. I'll be great. Uh, music videos, you will be shocked at the amount of effects and editing techniques and footage and stuff you're going to be chucking in there. Okay, if you do pick a song which is longer, let's just say you know you pick some ten minute kind of stumper, uh, just pick the best three minutes. OK, so you can edit the song yourself. You can do a fade out. That's really, really easy. You can do something like that uh, in the industry. Uh, taking a long song and then making it shorter to make it more commercial is called a radio edit. So you're actually going to be thinking about industry stuff if you do pick a longer song and cut it down. Next, you need at least two filming locations, but probably more. Now, one of these filming locations is likely to be a studio. So when I say studio, it might be the actual studio, for example, the photography studio at our college, uh, or it could be a fake studio. It could just be, you know, a nice white wall or something like that. It could be uh, a brick wall, uh, something kind of nice and bland where you would stand potentially in front of a microphone and uh, perform the song, maybe directly to the camera and lip syncing. So that's very cliched and stereotypical uh, but it can work really really well uh, and you can also you know change it up you can mix things up you can do something different for example again in the video to Riptide we have the master shot of the woman singing and as the video progresses her makeup gets more and more smushed and her the subtitles get worse and worse and it gets gradually creepier and creepier even though it is very conventional uh, so that's something that you can consider and you could totally rip that off if you wanted to. Uh, so, yeah, more on that later on. Um, so you might want to consider like, you know, a rehearsal. So people playing instruments and stuff like that. Uh, so especially if you're picking like a rock song, you know, you need a guitar, you need drums, you know, ideally that would be something fantastic. Uh, and we've got this stuff, you know, you can borrow a guitar, you can borrow a bass, you can whatever. A live venue, um, yeah, this can be tricky uh, because obviously a live venue, you know, if you're going to have a, like a live performance, a band performance of the song, well, you can't just film many old bands. Um, 
you can't just go to a gig and just film the artist. Um, but yeah, yes, yeah, something like that would be cool. Uh, other locations, you know, so on site, exteriors, interiors. Music videos are odd. Music videos are strange. Uh, and the more different locations you can cram into your music video, often the better. Uh, do remember that you are trying to scream to the world in just three minutes about how wonderful this track is and why you should buy it right there and then. Or why you should book gig tickets to go and see the artist right there and then. Or why you should buy a t-shirt or go out and get a tattoo or whatever else it is that uh, young people do. Uh, so, you need to create a wide range of camera shots, angles, and movement to interpret the music and lyrics of the song. So, let's just say if we've got a sad song, a really, really sad song, we've got some sad lyrics, uh, if you just shove a camera in front of someone's face while they just kind of, you know, go blah, 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 um, that's not really going to get across that sense of sadness to the audience. So maybe something you could do is, I don't know, uh, tint the footage blue in order to give it a blue kind of sad, miserable feeling. You could have a high angle shot in order to indicate vulnerability. You could tilt the camera. You could create a canted angle in order to create a sense of uncertainness. You can consider the mise-en-scene. Like you could go somewhere really grubby and covered with graffiti. Uh, you could litter the floor around you with rubbish in order to kind of demonstrate how sad this person is. So, yeah, um, this is the kind of stuff you need to be thinking about constantly. OK, don't just kind of think, well, you know, I'm just going to have someone just standing in front of the camera in jeans and a T-shirt. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, <clears throat> just doing stuff. Um, so, yeah. So... Yeah, basically, lots and lots of camera shots and camera angles. Don't just keep on doing mid shots. That is the worst possible thing when I'm marking a video, is just mid shot, mid shot, mid shot, mid shot. So close up, extreme close up, like a, just the white of an eye or lips which are singing. Like these things are really, really effective, okay? Like someone's hand, like touching something for a second, okay? Like in extreme close up, like these things are really, really useful. Uh, but yeah, and long shots, extreme long shots, stuff like that. Use all the different angles, use all of them. Okay, so extreme long shot, extreme close up, mid shot, long shot, close up, bird's eye view, worm's eye view. Yeah, whatever. Okay, shove them all in there, but only when appropriate, sort of. Yeah. Uh, you need to have shots of the artist or the band in order to uh, establish a clear identity or image. Now, it really depends on what kind of artist you're doing. If you're doing a rock song, a metal song, then we need to have shots of the band with attitude. We need leather. We need studs. We need them, you know, doing the sign of the devil uh, and, you know, doing a solo on guitar and spinning their hair around and stuff like that. If you're doing uh, a pop star, uh, like Dua Lipa or someone like that, or um, then we need to kind of demonstrate that they are uh, well, young and attractive. Uh, we need to demonstrate their style, that they are edgy, that they are different from everybody else, that they have attitude, that they're doing something, you know, a little bit different from the norm. Um, how we get this through is often through costume. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, one thing that you should really, really, really consider at this stage is um, in music videos, artists don't wear like jeans and t-shirts, right? They don't wear the kind of stuff that people rock up to in college every day. So you need to start considering costumes. I don't want to see anybody in a hoodie and jeans, right? That is the most... Sorry, this is going to sound bitchy, but that is the most boring look imaginable for a music video. OK, when we watch music videos, we want to see somebody interesting, someone weird, someone different, the kind of person who, if they walk into the room, they're going to, you know, drop jaws. They're going to shock people. It's going to be different. It's going to be odd. It's going to be like, whoa, what are you wearing? OK, so really, really do consider something like that. OK, so costume is definitely one of the most straightforward ways in order to get across a sense of brand identity. Performance footage. So someone needs to be performing. This could include and this is not limited to this, but this is the most straightforward ways of doing this. This could include lip syncing. 
This include could include rehearsal footage. So uh, I don't know why the exam spec always do this kind of stuff. But um, this include like people sitting around in a studio, kind of strumming their guitars and stuff like that. Um, this can include dancing. Now that that's really important. Like uh, if you know someone who can dance, or if you can dance, then you should dance because dance is really really important. Dance gets across a sense of movement. Uh, to be quite honest, like you know, music videos I marked in the past which have clear dance routines, they tend to do better because they're more conventional and they get across this sense of brand identity and they get across this sense of performance and they get across this sense of movement and dynamism and stuff like that. Uh, so live footage as well, yeah, someone actually making the song in some way. But you can also interpret this in different ways. So let's just say if you do have, I don't know, some dance song with no lyrics, it might be trickier in some ways, but if you have someone like on a mixer, like kind of changing knobs and dials and stuff like that, like cranking up the volume and, you know, operating the faders and what have you, um, then yeah, you know, this is the kind of stuff you can be doing. You need to represent at least one social group. Okay, now this is really, really important. You're getting marked for this. You're going to identify a social group that you're going to be representing. Now, this social group might be fairly straightforward. It might be, for example, teenage girls or young women or uh, men in their mid 20s or something like that. So something kind of fairly straightforward and gender slash age related. You might also want to consider representations of ethnicity. So for example, uh, young black men. Uh, and you might want to consider, so rather like uh, how Beyonce uh, considers the representation of working class and underclass black people in the South of America, uh, and kind of looking at all the different representations of black identity. Um, yeah, you might want to consider subverting representations. So if you have a group of people, for example, young black men who are perhaps uh, stereotypically negatively represented by the media, uh, you might want to consider ways in which to subvert that or to flip it on its head. Um, it doesn't just need to be based around gender and ethnicity. You can also do social class, for example, uh, you know, kind of working class, middle class, like whatever. Um, really, this could be any group. And depending on the kind of music video you're making, uh, this may be more or less important. This might be something that instantly jumps out or it might be something a little bit more subtle, uh, but you will need to include a representation. This means that everybody needs to have somebody in their music video. OK, so there needs to be somebody in there in order to represent this social group, unless you're doing it in some very abstract way, in which case you're going to need to talk to me about that. You need to have a clear structure with an element of narrative, right? So the music video needs to be clearly structured. In that sense, you'll be swapping from performance to something else, right? That for a music video is a clear structure. OK, now music videos are often completely bonkers right they'll just jump backwards and forwards they'll do whatever okay uh they'll flip backwards and forwards in time so what was that there's a music video by katie perry and suddenly she's like a pharaoh and suddenly she's like in a bedroom and it's all very neon and like you know blah. uh you can do something like that that's absolutely fine this next point you might be thinking well elements of narrative story i don't want to do a story you don't have to narrative does not mean story OK, narrative is the way in which a story is told. It's the form of communication. Narrative is things like shot types, camera angles. Narrative doesn't mean that you have to do this Todorovian three act narrative structure. You don't need to have a disruption and restoration of the equilibrium. OK, for example, the narrative of Riptide is not so much a sense of resolution, but it's this idea of threat which keeps on getting built up but never ever resolved. Now, it's not a conventional narrative in the slightest. OK, so, yeah, something to consider there. Uh, so basically, you can make this as bonkers as possible. OK, do also remember narrative is things like binary oppositions. So if you've got two things which completely conflict with one another, 
that's narrative. Okay, diametric opposition, structuralism, that's narrative. Okay, uh, Bart's prioritic codes, uh, Bart's hermeneutic codes, you know, all these elements of like symbolism and semiotic readings and stuff, that's, that's all narrative. Okay, so if someone pulls out a gun, probably don't do that, especially not in public, um, but that's narrative because essentially you've established a sense of threat and potentially a sense of intertextuality. Just just do what you want, all right? Uh, you need to edit original footage to the music track, right? It's really, really important. The footage needs to be your own. It is your own footage. It can't be anybody else's footage. There are a couple of exceptions to this. So if it's just a couple of seconds, uh, it might be quite cool to like just chuck something in for like a second, like maybe some ancient cartoon from the, like the 1930s, so maybe Mickey Mouse getting his head kicked in. I don't know why I thought of that, but something like that might be cool. But basically, it needs to be your footage. You need to shoot it. You need to edit it. It's yours. You. This is a little bit odd because most music videos don't have this, unless it's like K-pop. They bloody love putting this kind of stuff in um, but you need to have graphics depicting the original name of your artist or band and the title of the track okay so let's just say you're doing a Billie Eilish song you've called her Millie Bilish because why not uh, so you would need to have that coming up at some point during the track you could add the titles in using Premiere Pro or After Effects at a later date. Another thing you can also do is just write it on a piece of cardboard and hold it up. I mean, obviously, that's not going to work in every music video. You could write it on something. You could spell it out in twigs on the floor. Uh, you could spell it out in sweets like love hearts on the floor. I mean, I, I don't know. There's like loads and loads of different ways of doing this in an inventive way. So although this is a bit of a weird thing to ask you guys to do, there's a lot of room for creativity here. Right. So that's the music video. That's everything for the music video. And as you can see, although there are some restrictions, you can pretty much do whatever you like. For the second task, now this is the magazine. I'm only going to go over this in a little bit of detail because um, you're going to be doing this much later. Okay, but you need to do three pages. You need to do a front cover and a double page spread. Um, the title, masthead, strap line, everything that we've done for Adbusters and for Woman magazine, you need to include in this magazine. Okay, it needs to look like a magazine. And if you have a look at our blog, then you can see examples of magazines which students have done. If you remember the corridor outside the classroom, you can think about examples that the students have done. They look pretty good. Um, <clears throat> in many ways, this whole magazine bit is a lot more straightforward than the music video stuff. But um, yeah, so you also need to include a feature article, approximately 300 words to promote the new artist or band. So this is in a double page spread. So essentially, the most straightforward way of doing this is to interview your band, okay? Is to create an interview where they can talk about, yeah, you know, this is really what we want to get across, like representation. Like, you know, we really, really wanted to think about, you know, how black men are represented in society. You know, we really wanted to challenge that representation um so yeah but basically for this task you are ticking off the boxes of what you need to include in a magazine you are you're going to be making photo uh, you'll be using photoshop to make this uh we, we kind of experimented with doing publisher last year it didn't really work people preferred photoshop but that's what you're going to be doing um so yeah all kinds of stuff it says at the bottom there this will be completed in september october 2019 this is because i'm reusing a powerpoint from last year just slightly changed and i forgot to change that actually the completion date for this is who knows because we don't really know we're kind of pushing a lot of stuff back for this at this stage um cool excellent but just that's just so you know right so this workbook that I'm going through at the moment is pretty long uh, and basically you might be thinking well why do I have to do it so what you're actually getting marked on is the music video obviously the magazine and a short essay called aims and intentions right so this preparation you might be thinking is well why are we doing that so reason for it is quite frankly is to get a higher grade 
in, if you go through this preparation, it will really, really, really help you to create an excellent music video, which will help me to justify giving you the highest grade possible. So preparation is going to help you to do this. So what I've talked about before is just the bare minimum. So it needs to be like three minutes long and stuff like that. This is how you get an A in the music video coursework. This is how you push it up to the very, very highest level. And this is also includes the magazine as well. You need to use media language to demonstrate intertextuality and or generic hybridity. So are you making reference to other music videos? Are you making reference to other films or TV shows or current debates or, you know, issues in society and stuff like that? So that's intertextuality beyond the text. And generic hybridity, you know, are you combining lots of different genres? I keep using Riptide as an example of that because we've all watched it. Uh, but that is a really kind of naff indie pop song. But the music video is making intertextual references to other genres. So specifically like 70s Italian horror films and Italian crime films and stuff like that. And American horror films like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So that's the kind of stuff that it's making reference to. If you can do something like that, that is wonderful. That is fantastic. OK, Beyonce in formation, she does exactly the same thing. OK, can you convey a complex representation of a social group using media language? Now, literally just saying, you know, OK, I'm going to be representing young women, uh, so they're going to be wearing pink, you know, and they'll be doing a dance. Cool, you know, brilliant. I mean, like a lot of music videos are like that, okay? But in order to get an A, you need to make it more complex. So one of the music videos I set you to watch during lockdown was uh, Da 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 Do by uh, Blackpink. Uh, so it's funny to say that one. Uh, so Blackpink are a Korean pop group um, and they have quite a complex representation of young women. OK, so they're quite aggressive in terms of their delivery, like one of them at one point is sitting on a huge tank made out of diamonds in that video. If we think about the prioritic code of a tank, you know, it suggests aggression, it suggests violence, it suggests the threat of violence. You know, when they sing directly into the camera, there is almost like this sense of violence and yet at the same time it's not because it's all very cute and cuddly and pink as well. Uh, and I guess that kind of comes across in their name as well, like black pink as well. Um, so this is the kind of stuff that you need to consider, like can you subvert the representations of a social group, of an ethnicity, of an age, of a gender? And can you do it using media language, shot types, camera angles and stuff like that? Now, there's no one way of doing this. So just go wild, um, you know, really, really think about this. And again, yeah, OK, this is pretty much the same point. Again, subvert and challenge typical representational stereotypes. OK, so we talked about the representation of young black men. OK, so very often negatively stereotyped, like even in media products like created by young black men, like consider exactly how many UK hip hop videos like kind of feature people in balaclavas kind of making gun signs directly towards the camera uh, in a gritty social housing estate you know and obviously Stuart Hall would be saying something along the lines of that this reinforces the stereotype and it actually denigrates this group within society you know can you subvert that can you change it you know can you do something maybe along the same lines but different I don't know like put them in a pink Balaclava. Okay, let's, who knows? Who knows? Right, present an ideological context typical to. Oh, I forgot to update the slide. Okay, uh, if you picked an independent music label, something odd, something a bit weird, if it's more kind of vaporwave or PC music or glitch or something like that, you need to create a music video which is more independent, which is more weird. Okay, if you've picked something like pop music like Ariana Grande kind of stuff you need to make something which is much more luxurious and over the top now everyone's budget is going to be zero for this <clears throat> if you do spend any money that's on your own back but you need to consider how to address the ideology of that okay 
Finally, you need to create a magazine which demonstrates clear stylistic, thematic, and ideological links to your music videos. So let's just say if you made a music video which you know really challenged uh, the expectations placed on young women in society, and you presented young women in like in an aggressive way, which might be seen as being subversive in terms of representation. Um, yeah, the magazine would need to continue with that representation, okay? And if you use, like, I don't know, loads and loads of purple in your music video, because that's what you're all about, uh, maybe the magazine could also continue with that purple within the double page spreads, okay? I think, you know, a lot of this we're going to have to talk more about when we actually do the magazines, but just do remember, you're going to be making a magazine at one point. Next point, ideas and inspiration. Right, so now we're actually getting into the actual PowerPoint and I'll whiz through the rest of this. So at this stage, hopefully your brain will be buzzing with lots of different ideas. Here's a slide. If you ever have an idea, chuck it on this slide. Even if you think that idea is utterly crap, chuck it on this slide. I'm looking around my office at the moment. There's a piece of string. Maybe I'd write down string. Maybe I could work string into this. Maybe I could have someone suspended by pieces of string. They're like a puppet. At the start of the song, the string lifts his head and he looks directly at the camera. That's either a brilliant idea or someone's already done it. I'm probably just ripping somebody off. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Around... Uh, yeah, cool. Excellent. So every time you have an idea, it doesn't matter how terrible it is, just chuck it on this slide and keep going on more slides if needs be. Textual analysis and representation. Now you've kind of been doing this already. Okay, so previously before we went on lockdown, and no, actually after we went on lockdown, I got you to analyse music videos, right? So you picked music videos and I gave you music videos like the Blackpink video and stuff like that. And I asked you to textually analyze this. So this is what I'd like you to do on these slides. Why am I making you textually analyze music videos? What is the point? I don't hear you ask because you're not here. Um, but basically you are gonna be ripping off music videos. I know I said that this music video had to be your own product. Well, media doesn't work like that. It's a collaborative process. People see stuff they like and they take it. So we think about film, for example. We think about a film like Black Christmas, which came out in the late 70s in Canada. And in some ways, this influenced John Carpenter, who ended up making Halloween, which was generally considered to be one of the very first slasher films and then this went on and you know we had like hundreds and hundreds of cheap slasher films horror films people running around with knives and stuff like that terrorizing young women and then in the mid 90s then this went on to inform the scream films and then that went on to inform the scary movie films um so as we can see like you know media is completely it eats itself like everyone copies off each other. You know, this is called intertextuality. This is called homage, but it's also stealing. So you're gonna watch a whole bunch of music videos and I want you to steal ideas from them, okay? Now, you've already done this. So if you take, well, you're rather, you should have already done this if you were doing the work that I set you. And the reason why I set it for you is because it leads into this, okay? And I know it's a lot of work, but if you've already done it, then all you need to do is just copy and paste it in here. So, for example, let's just say we're doing, I don't know, Anaconda by Nicki Minaj. Don't do that. Uh, it's a bit rude. Uh, you might want to talk about the editing techniques here. So what shot types and camera angles? Uh, Colour, mise-en-scene. There's lots of uh, fruit in that video, like pineapples and stuff. That's what I remember. Uh, and the setting, it's set in the jungle. Uh, and, you know, you can steal these ideas, you can take them, you can do your own version of these ideas, that is absolutely fine. So that's how they create meaning. And then the same videos as before, stick the name of the artist in there. Um, what representations are encoded in these music videos? So for example, in the video to Formation by Beyonce, one representation is young black women. How is it encoded? There is a mid shot followed by a close up of 
I can't remember if it's two or three young black women uh, with brightly coloured hair standing in a neon lit weave shop uh, in Louisiana, staring directly into the camera. The ideology of the producer is that it is presenting uh, a very specific representation of black identity, of proud working class black identity which isn't generally seen in films and tv shows and music videos and stuff like that and that's really really simple that's an excellent way of encoding the ideology like the fact they put them in a weave shop uh, and, and the fact they're staring directly into the camera that's two very simple and straightforward ideas that you can kind of pinch your own music video like think about what group you're representing and then think about where you want to put this person if you are getting across the sense of working class identity well you can't film in a nice suburb in cambridge you're probably going to need to go somewhere slightly edgier and if you want to get across a sense of luxury then you'll want to go and you know go somewhere luxurious or something like that it's a little simple. um so representation one on this slide you pick a social group and you create a collage of this social group so let's just say you are doing uh, let's go with this again uh so working class black women um you'd want to kind of find images of this social group like how are they represented uh, all the images here should be taken from music videos so yeah exactly um, <clears throat> might be a little bit tricky are there any images that you find subversive or stereotypical so essentially you know you're just copying and pasting images and then just chucking them onto the slide so for example you know young women okay there's loads of those young female pop stars let's just find loads so you must just say you find Billie Eilish, Dua Lipa, Ariana Grande, Nicki Minaj blah 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 she's not that young Katy Perry <laughs> she's not that young ah, I'm so old um so basically you chuck them all in there and you know what what similarities do you find blah 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 uh one of the ways i'm going to judge you is when i watch your music video if there's a bit in it where i'm like ah that was great and if i go off and if i tell another teacher about that bit oh god you've got to see so and so's video she had this bit where ooh, yeah um you need to think what is the thing that your video is actually going to be remembered for right what is the thing like if it's just you know if your idea of a stage is well we, we stand in the park and we dance it's like no i'm not gonna remember that video no one's gonna remember that video it's a little bit harsh but you need to consider what is going to make it different you know i'm going to stand in the park and i'm going to be wearing an absolutely enormous hat well that's better right uh, i'm going to stand in the park at night with two torches kind of spinning around um even better Right. So you need to really it's like thinking about music videos that I've marked over the many, many years that I've been teaching. Uh, like, And you can find these on the blog as well. There's a whole bunch of previous student music videos. Check them out and think about which ones are actually really, really good. Like think about what makes the ones that are really good. And I guarantee the ones that are really good are the ones that you will remember later on. The one with the weird, wonderful, strange image. What makes the images stand out? So what I want you to do for this is pick six music videos and then just you know on youtube you can do this in like 10 seconds just scroll through and just pick out an image which really really stands out and the best music videos you can stop the music video at any stage and that could be a photograph that could be a media product that demonstrates the ideology of the producer okay industry and marketing this is where it gets exciting <laughs> um so your artist is going to belong to a specialist label right so in order to investigate this you are going to need to look at some specialist labels so for example we've already talked about def jam def jam are a major label and they basically publish rap music uh pretty straightforward rap music as well uh, not like you know kind of soundcloud rap or like chopped and screwed or that something weird like that you know it, it's very normal <laughs> uh other music labels include warp now warp based in sheffield and they basically mainly release uh electronic music so weird and wonderful stuff like ice oh, like square pusher and apex twin and ortec uh, 
uh, and cool stuff like that. XL are a major label and they released indie stuff, so indie pop stuff. Earache released extreme metal, um, you know, all guitar like kind of stuff. Uh, and we also got other labels like Edition Omega uh, who release like absolutely bizarre stuff that you've probably never heard of before, which is often just kind of strange noises and frequencies and stuff like that. Um, so what I'd like you to do for this task is to pick a couple of labels. They don't have to be these labels. These are just examples if you are confused or if you don't you know, I just want to get stuck in instantly, just, you know, I'm going to look at earache. Oh, that's not nice. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just kind of wrangling through this. So name of the label, when did it start? Why is it considered specialist? What kind of music does it release? Uh, convergence. Now, yeah, just very quickly, like the reason why we're doing this is this is all leading up to something. So if you're kind of thinking this is a bit much of a muchness, this is all leading up to something. Select one of the labels from examples of specialist label slides and then select one of the artists. How is this artist promoted using digital technologies? Now, digital technologies might involve things like YouTube. It might involve things like social media and stuff like that. OK, uh, it's how their music is distributed. Like, How do you actually get hold of their music? Do you get hold of it on like, you know, Apple Music, uh, iTunes? Like, um, you know, do they solely release their stuff on SoundCloud? uh band camp all kinds of stuff so yeah uh so yeah basically that's what you're considering so convergence is the coming together of different media industries and the music industry is very what we call digitally convergent okay so vast majority of music that people especially young people listen to now is accessed digitally is streamed is downloaded uh is yeah podcasted or whatever Audience targeting and appeal. This is a weird task, this is always a fun task, but this is something which producers actually do. Um, so, what I'd like you to do is select a very specific subgenre and create a. So, for the song that you've hopefully already selected, um, I want you to pick out your target audience and I want you to create a pen portrait. Now, a pen portrait is a weird thing. It's not just target audience. So it's not just like, OK, she's you know, like women aged 18 to 24 or something like that. Instead, what you do is you pick up the actual age. OK, she's 21. She is at university. She is middle class. She has a lot of expendable income. Her hobbies include, you know, going clubbing. She tends to go out three times a week. Her favourite takeaway is Thai. Uh, she goes on holiday to <laughs> Asia uh, and her name is Jane and she lives in Hertfordshire. Um, this is how specific you need to be of a pen portrait. So just kind of list these things. Uh, you can even find a picture of her or him or whoever it is that you end up doing. But this will really help you with your music video. Once you create this person, your target audience, you think, well, who am I making this for? And it might well be that your pen portrait just ends up being you. OK, so that's something that you can do. You can just basically make a pen portrait based on yourself. Audience response. So for this, you're going back to music videos. Uh, what I want you to do is select three different music videos and just briefly demonstrate how they address the audience. So positioning, how do they position the audience? Where are the audience? Are the audience up close and personal? Are the audience distant? OK, are we being threatened? Is someone right in our face and threatening us? Or are we up close and we like to be there, you know, because the artist is attractive, because the artist is welcoming and friendly? Surveillance. So this is something else which music videos give us, is a glimpse into an artist or a celebrity's life and lifestyle. So what do we get to know about them? And for example, if we did like a Lady Gaga video, then what we get to learn about them is that she, uh, is that she is really cool, that she is really edgy, that she doesn't give a crap about anybody and she's going to dress exactly how she wants. OK, 
anchorage is exactly how the audience is weighed down like how are we supposed to feel what are we supposed to feel when we watch something so for example in the video to riptide we are supposed to be confused and upset and this is anchored through the use of mise-en-scene the smeared lipstick you know the crying faces and stuff like that mode of address is exactly how the product speaks to the audience so if you listen to a lot of rap and hip hop you know it uses a lot of slang in order to talk to well, the target audience would often be a young uh black working class inner city audience although to be quite honest with a lot of rap and hip hop you get a lot of white middle class boys listening to that but never mind um but yeah so that's the mode of address so a lot of music aimed at teenage girls will have someone who looks like a teenage girl in it for example ariana grande, ariana grande who's not actually a teenager anymore but she looks like one and that's the important point okay so modes of address is how the product speaks to you it's what language it uses and it's how it looks looks at you and it's how it you know wants you to relate to it so in the three slides to whack those music videos on audience interaction fandom uh cool in what ways can so the artist you're looking at for the convergence slide in what ways can fans interact with this audience artist this video probably needs to come to an end soon uh find explicit examples okay so what can you do how can the fans interact so find these explicit examples blah 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 secondary and primary research okay so what from these this is basically if you find a book or a tv show or a documentary or anything like that or a website which has some information you are going to pop it on this slide so for example if we get, i could keep using young black man as an example uh but it does tend to be quite a popular example of a group to represent for a level music video projects um let's just say we do some research like in social deprivation in the uk kind of what areas do tend to be more socially deprived and things like that like if you were for example criminology students might kind of look at the rates of social deprivation and how they correlate with crime uh, that's something you can pop down in this don't worry about this too too much this is just if you find anything just pop it in all right now i've no idea how we're going to do this guys because previously what we would have done is you would have delivered a pitch to the rest of the class you would have demonstrated exactly what your music video was going to be what song you were going to pick you were going to explain to everyone exactly how the audience were going to be engaged you were going to talk about paradigmatic features i.e genre conventions so things which would make it like that genre so if you could do a pop song what would make it look like a pop song you would talk about how you're going to make a subversive representation and the take home image what is the image which is going to you know be stuck in people's minds for like years and years after they finish the screening of this um because normally in a non-plague year we would be going to the cinema and showing your songs at the end of the year uh, a lot of this is going to be up in the air okay um i don't quite know how we're going to do this but what i'll probably get you to do is just email me a very brief set of bullet points and i'll tell you when this is due in and i'll give you a bit of feedback on this as well now this is kind of extremely important so everything you have been doing so far has been leading up to this now you're marked on your music video and you are marked on your magazine but you are also marked on this essay called learner statement of aims and intentions right now i'm not going to go into this now because i've seen i've just been almost been recording for an entire hour uh but basically i would do this as a separate video talking through exactly what you need to do on this 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 talk today is just supposed to be about this workbook okay but this is an essay that you will submit it is worth 10 marks and your music video and magazine combined is worth 50 marks so this is not insignificant right one in every six marks that you earn for your coursework comes from this essay it's 500 words it's very very short it's very straightforward 
but it's still important. So I'm gonna talk through this in another video, depending on how well this video comes out. So skip past this. Uh, the final ones in the planning and preparation, uh, mood board. So lots and lots of cool things. Anything that you like the look of, you should shove into your music video. Okay, so any kind of colours, any kind, if you're on Instagram, for example, and you see, you know, someone wearing something that looks awesome, uh, do a screenshot of that and then shove it into this mood board. Okay, if there is a particular artist that you particularly like, you know, screenshot that. If it's a film you really, really like and you really like the costumes, just say Pulp Fiction, I don't know, the Quentin Tarantino film, and you're thinking, I love the suits in that film. You know, the really, really cheap, nasty, badly worn suits. You know, you might want to do some screenshots of that. You know, um, anything you like from an aesthetic perspective. If you have an Instagram account already, and if you're thinking, well, what kind of stuff should go on my mood board? Um, just check out, you know, your own Instagram account, because the kind of stuff that you like and the kind of stuff you post is basically your mood board. It's basically your aesthetic. It's the kind of stuff you like. Uh, I posted a, a mood board onto the blog, my own mood board. So if you just search for mood board on the blog, you should be able to find that. This is where you chuck your ideas. So every time you have an idea for your music video, you chuck them. So the vague ideas were at the start, but a brief synopsis, like an idea that you're going to have for your music video. OK, so chuck it in here. Like, is it actually going to be possible? What is going to be a take home image? You know, what is going to be the thing that people remember? Blah, blah, blah. Recce, use Google Maps to check around to find locations that you're going to be using for your music video. Now this year you can't leave the house. So don't go out for a walk. Don't go out. Well, I mean, you can leave the house once to go for exercise. But um, yeah, you're going to have to use Google Maps for this. Find places that you can film for your music video. OK, and make quick notes on the pros and cons of this. For example, this place looks really cool and edgy, but I might get mugged. Uh, or this place looks really busy and cool. Oxford Street, you know, wonderful. I could set up there, that'd be brilliant. Uh, but then someone's just going to knock over my camera, right? So that's a really, really, really bad idea to film in Oxford Street. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Recce is where you basically pick out locations that you are going to use. Shopping list. I told you your budget is zero. However, if you want to buy anything for your music video, you can. You do not have to. And my official advice is buy nothing for your music video. Use stuff that you already have lying around. If you do buy costumes, buy them from a charity shop because you're probably going to end up changing them. OK, you're probably going to end up tearing them or stitching them together or doing whatever. OK, you, if you've got some specific bit of makeup that you need to buy, you know, do go ahead. If you get a, yeah, I guess with the lock. Anyway, sorry, getting distracted. Um, so, yeah, this is just something you can stick down there. Um, penultimate slide, I think, storyboard or a shot list. So this is an example of a storyboard from Toy Story. Uh, and it's just a demonstration of professional storyboards. Storyboards are very, very time consuming, but extremely useful. Storyboards are like much more important than a script. They are like a shopping list for your shots. OK, so one of the most annoying things and students will do this every year. And one of you guys listening to this will do this, um, but basically you go out for a day shooting and you come back and then you realise that actually, oh, I haven't done any close ups. I haven't done any long shots. Every shot I've done is a mid shot. And a storyboard, if you're using it and if you're taking it with you, will stop you from doing this. OK, so if we have a look at this storyboard here, we can see there is a range of. So what we've got here is a long shot POV here. We're looking through Woody's eyes. We cut to a mid shot. OK, we cut to slightly further mid shot then we also got a nice perspective change here as you demonstrate how small Woody is we cut to a bird's eye view shot we cut to a worm's eye view shot we cut to a long shot slightly low angle 
and then we cut to a montage of two different bird's eye view or high angle shots here. OK, so what we've got here is a range of different shot types and camera angles. Obviously, you're not going to be well, you might you're probably not going to be making a CG music video. Um, but these are the kind of techniques that you should be doing for your music video. Uh, and what we got down here, yep, a shot list. So if you don't want to draw anything, this is something else you can do is a shot list, which is basically a series of written description of each shot. So blood on floor, flowing in reverse, bullet on floor, glasses on floor, dimly lit. Uh, this refers to things like extreme close up, close up, mid close up, establishing mid shot, blah, blah, blah. Uh, exterior, exterior, INTs, interior, uh, camera movement. You can find templates for storyboards and for shot lists online. I'll leave it up to you which one you do, but you should be doing one or the other. That is extremely important. Equipment list. When you come back, you will be booking out equipment from us. So please do remember, you do not need to have a camera or anything in order to do this. We have all the equipment that you need, right? The only stuff that you might want to consider is stuff like costume. But even then, we might be able to help you out with that. OK, however, we have. DSLRs or cameras, essentially our digital cameras. We have tripods. Don't worry about microphones. You don't need one. You've already got music video. Uh, LEDs. You will need that. OK, they're extremely important. A shoulder mount. If you're going to be walking around with your camera, don't just hold it in your hand. It looks shockingly bad. It looks like a child made it. Instead, put it on a shoulder mount. A dolly is a little uh, trolley that you stick your camera on for smooth movement and panning shots. A wheelchair dolly is just that. It is a wheelchair that you can sit in and someone else can push you around. And if you combine that with a shoulder mount, you can get some very nice shots. Uh, skip fly cam. A slider is essentially a little train track that you screw your camera onto and you can move it along. Uh, and it's very cool and I can't really describe it right now. And then finally, GoPro is that little, uh, you know, digital camera that you can strap onto your head and, you know, go skydiving with and stuff like that. And it's great for POV shots, but not in every instance. That is the last slide. So obviously there's a huge ton of work to do for this project. Um, and I'm not expecting you to do this overnight. Now, technically, the most important slides are the ones I haven't actually covered, i.e. the aims and intentions. But basically, what I want you to do is prioritise, first of all, OK, so this is my conclusion. Prioritise, first of all, your ideas. Chuck down your ideas, OK? Any kind of idea, even if it is, just like I said, a bit of string, right? Then. Your music video analysis. You can copy and paste this from the stuff you've already done, but the whole point about this is that you are stealing ideas. Okay, so ideas that other music videos have done, you're stealing them. Then all this stuff about representation, specialist label research, you know, we'll go through this kind of bit by bit. Please, please, please do make sure to update your workbook within the drive. If you do not update it, I can't see the changes you've made. I hope this worked well. I had no idea I'd be talking for almost 70 minutes. This was probably a bad idea and I will make sure that my next video is significantly shorter. OK, thank you very much, everybody. See you later.